thank you all for coming. Um, today we're going to talk about a very important topic, which is fashion forward, the sustainable fashion movement and community. Uh, today we have with us Claudia, Marta and Valentina. The three of them are very advocates of the sustainable fashion community. And let's begin. So after much discussion, it's time to turn words into action. The fashion industry generates a big impact on the environment and the welfare calls for urgent measures, such as reducing environmental harm, ensuring ethical supply chains, and embracing technological advancements. We have a big question here that Claudia, Marta, and Valentina will discuss about. So how can we empower the fashion to be more sustainable and to foster positive impact environmentally and socially speaking? Who wants to go okay. first? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start. Uh, thank you very much, Monica, for the introduction. I'm very happy and honored to be here. So thank you, South Summit, for the invitation and for be sharing this panel with this incredible woman. Uh, my name is Claudia Ojeda. I'm the founder of Run to Wear. And we are a technological solution to build circularity for brands. So regarding your question, um, empowering uh, sustainable fashion communities requires a multifaceted approach, leveraging a, leveraging a few things. The first one is education. I strongly believe that we need to educate people to understand the impact of their purchase decision. And we also need to educate the industry, like offering training programs for designers uh, to have practical um, and theoretical sustainability um, uh, practices and also knowing uh, of new, new materials. The second one will be collaboration, hand-to-hand uh, -hand with innovation. I think it's very important to partner not only with other key players of the industry, but also see what other industries are doing. Um, a great example of this is now we uh, talk as an innovative thing about take-back programs in fashion that uh, I believe that everyone knows what it's a take-back program, but just in case, uh, it's the possibility of returning your clothes uh, when, you longer, when you no longer use them, and in exchange you get points or discounts. This is something that, for example, Apple has been doing for years with their trading program, so uh, it would be great to see what other industries are, are doing um, to focus there. And the last one is uh, obviously regu regulation, an incredible wave of, of regulation It's coming from Europe. So we need to uh, help the brands to stay ahead of this regulation and work hand to hand with the government. OK, I'll go first. Um, thank you, South Summit, for, for inviting me. Uh, I'm Marta from Matiz. We are a luxury secondhand platform. Um, so about your question, sorry, about your question, um, I'm going to throw a little bit of uh, optimism here. I think uh, fashion is a consumer business, and I think we are doing great. I mean, if we look back in the last five years, we did an amazing job. Like, nowadays, we're more sustainable than five years ago. So I think that uh, that's 10 points for us. <laughs> and I think we need to keep doing uh, the good things that we're doing inside the, fa the fashion business and other businesses, of course, uh, to go forward into sustainability. Um, I'm going to say also three pillars, which I think are important, um, more into customer uh, basis. So the first one, I think it might be to do sustainable fashion cool, goods. I think the customer expects that. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, no one wants something that is uncool. So um, the cool will be the first pillar. Uh, so create something desirable, something uh, aspirational. Uh, so the customer is interested in buying that kind of uh, garment or item. The second one will be uh, to be more accessible. So here comes the laws and governments, as Claudia said. Uh, we need to work that the prices from fast fashion and sustainable brands are more or less equal. So when the customer comes, at the end of the day, he's looking at the price ticket. 
and it's almost impossible for sustainable brands to emerge and to be you know, competitive with such prices that we are having in, sustain in fast fashion. So I think the second one will be price, uh, to make it more accessible to everyone. And the third one will be um, mainstream. Like, sustainable fashion should be everywhere. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, once it's everywhere with the same prices, I'm pretty sure everyone is going to prefer to buy something that it's good quality, that you know the trustability, that you know that it's been made with uh, the right people behind. Um, so those are, th I think, the three main pillars that every sustainable fashion brand needs to have in mind to make the sustainability grow in the future. Thank you. So, um, I agree with, uh, <laughs> with Marta and Claudia that education and the product is essential. But, I mean, from my experience as a marketplace, we work with more than 155 brands at the moment. Um, the reason why we started this project is based on giving an alternative to the consumer. At the end, uh, when we started promoting the Spanish slow fashion, the slow fashion as a term, it wasn't that established and known in Spain. I mean, we are a, a culture and we are a country that has been living uh, and seen success stories of very big platforms and having like very easy and fast accessible clothing, accessories with a very competitive price. So the most important thing for us at the beginning was to educate the consumers and actually work with those small and medium brands, which are emerging, and there are a lot of them, and helping them to make the business economically viable. Mm -hmm. Because there are very good ideas, but at the end you have to sell, and consumers have to feel attractive to that. Mm -hmm. So. It's at the end meeting, like giving an alternative, because right now, I mean, the competitive, as all we know, is huge. And there is a part of these people that they feel that we are building a community of a slow fashion and people that are concerned about the sustainability, mm -hmm. that they didn't have an option. So marketplaces and uh, other shops and stores and uh, platforms that give that opportunity to brands, I think that that's another way of seeing it. Mm -hmm. So there is like a, like a safe space for consumers to find the products exactly. that match their values, everything in one place. It's interesting that uh, the three of you discussed about education being something very important to foster sustainability. I think also the same. It's, I think, the first step. Now we're moving on to the circular economy. The circular economy is based on three principles. Eliminate waste extend the life of materials, and re regenerate nature. Uh, Claudia, how do companies integrate circularity in run to wear OK. First of all, I would like to tell why we are focused on circularity. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about biodiversity, when we talk about climate change or human rights, we are always talking about minimizing something. We're talking about reducing something. But when we talk about circularity, we are talking about growing something. It's a positive agenda, and it's um, the kind of framework that people and the industry needs. So, well, to be honest, people are not willing to stop buying things. So why, instead of trying to sort of explain what is the carbon emission reduction strategy that we have, why don't we try and get en engaged with those people across our business within circularity? So that is what we're doing in run to wear We are creating uh, digital product passports that it's a touch point on the garments that connect the garment to circular services. And it's what we call unlock the, product, the, unlock the potential of your products. So people can know the story or resell, repair or recycle the garment just in one click. So we think that misleading the people to make circular economy decisions probably they are going to um, use their garments for longer, and they are going to buy things, but probably they are going to make them more durable. Mm -hmm. Marta, with Matid, you're a strong advocate of second-hand, especially luxury. 
Why secondhand should be always considered when looking for a new item? I mean, why not? <laughs> no, I, I mean, 50% um, of the next generation is already buying secondhand, and the other half is considering doing so this year. So I think those are really important numbers. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, about myself to answer you. Um, I started modeling when I was 15. And for me, fashion, uh, it's not only fashion. I mean, uh, there's something more. There's like a statement underneath that. So when someone is looking for to buy something, um, and they want to bet on second hand, you are buying something that is actually unique most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. So that uniqueness, that um, garment that it's going to be yours, it's, it's, it's not only an experience, because um, it's like a treasure hunt sometimes, yeah. or it's like going to the Alibaba's cave, more or less. So it's not only because the experience is more fulfillment for oneself, but also because it gives you that statement and that uh, empowerment when you're, f when you're wearing that, that garment, that I think you don't get that experience when you buy something that everyone has. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. The second thing is durability. I mean, if you're buying secondhand, you know that uh, that garment has been there for quite a long time sometimes. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure here everyone has something from mother, father, or even grandmother. I have stuff from my, my grand-grandmother. So durability will be the second one. Um, and then the last one, price. I mm -hmm. mean, in Matif, you can find luxury pieces that uh, it's 70% off from the original rental price. So as I said before, at the end of the day, the customer is looking to buy. He's looking at the tag. So when they see something good quality that they know they're gonna, it's going to last them uh, forever and it's going to go through generation to generation, um, there you go. I mean, they buy secondhand. But it's mostly the experience that you get when you buy secondhand. I totally agree. Valentina, Es Fascinante is the first community that brings together fashion, art, made in Spain. With a focus on promoting craftsmanship, tell us more about the importance of quality and craftsmanship in clothing. I mean, I think that in order to have like circular um, business models, like the rental or like the vintage, you have to start with a good product, high quality product. And that mm -hmm. it's done with the production process and having like a preserving the craftsmanship and making sure that uh, from the textile and to the production and the way that everything is done is it is in a high level. So at the end, the product could maintain, I mean, could live all, the, all those years that we want to, you know? So for us, that's fascinating when, when we choose a brand, it's essential that we know how they produce. I mean, all of them they produce in Spain. Most of the textiles and the fabrics, they don't, they're not coming from Spain because Spain is not strong in textile production. But we do have like a responsible, I think, uh, of preserving our craftsmanship and the know-how of mm -hmm. generations that right now, some of our brands are struggling to keep uh, working in that way and keep uh, doing like certain um, knitted uh, techniques and, and uh, of, of February, of February yeah. So I think that at the end um, it's, it's important because if we have to start from the product and um, the most sustainable way of talking about fashion is making sure that you're producing next to your door, I mean as close as, mm. as possible mm -hmm. and with the highest quality possible, also making sure that the price is competitive. Because as Marta mentioned, I mean, 
it's the, the problem with our brands is that they do an amazing product, but they also need volume, mm -hmm. you know, in order to have those margins and be sustainable. And that is what we are trying to do. We are, mm. We're trying to take a little bit of the fast fashion market, which will always be the first, I mean, the, the big thing. And I mean, that's, that, that's, that, that is a fact. But there's also like a good opportunity in the slow fashion market that we can move people that right now there are Consume, consuming in a different way and try to uh, make them like, look, this is fascinating. You have to try it because once they try it, they repeat. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think, yeah. The three of you have very innovative models that are fighting for empowering sustainability and giving alternatives to consumers. What do you think is going to be the next big thing? What innovations we can expect in the future? in the fashion industry? OK. Um, well, for me, uh, the trending topic will be circular fashion, of course. <laughs> I think that from now on, we are, st we are going to start to see how brands and even, even department stores uh, try to change their strategy to integrate these kind of circular services. We have already seen it in Galerías Lafayette, in Selfridge, and now in Wow here in Madrid. We have uh, rental and secondhand um, models. Uh, so for sure, it's going to be circular fashion. Uh, the second one will be technology integration. I think what we are going to start seeing how blockchains help us to have traceability and how artificial intelligence is used uh, to reduce overproduction or predict trends. And, uh, well, the, the last one, uh, of course, it will be the development of new sustainable materials. I mean, I think you said everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will add only uh, from a customer point of view, I will add maybe um, to have the transparency that we actually need as a consumer. Like, we have that into um, food. Like, mm -hmm. you get to see every single ingredient that you're actually eating. So I think the next thing, thanks to technology and, of course, hopefully laws, um, is seeing that into clothing. I mean, at the end of the day, it's something that it's touching you 24 hours. So uh, with your technology <laughs> and this kind of laws, um, I think we, we are going to see some kind of devel development, hopefully, in that area. Well, I, I think that, of course, as we have seen the last five years, governance is, I mean, it's, it's going to be just a trend and just keep going. And the demands and the, all the, the, the sustainable certificates are going to be more like in, in our day-to-day -day, uh, basis for businesses. But um, one of the things that I, I would main say that it's not that popular is craftsmanship. I, I, I really think that uh, there is, um, it's not going to be, I mean, it's not a trend, but it's been talking a lot about sustainability. But at the end, the craftsmanship, and we can see it in, in, uh, in the collaborations that they are keep going on between art and fashion, and they are all talking about craftsmanship. And that is something that I think that the, the, the society, they know that, I mean, that it's, a, it's valuable and it's part of the history and a part of the culture. And I think that um, that, that uh, consumer education and that consumer concerns and awareness of the value of craftsmanship is just going to keep growing. Hmm. And, I would, I, and, the, and the final thing I would say is like maybe localization in terms of everything. I think that people uh, they're looking for uh, like a more personalized um, an individual way of expression with their fashion more and more so trying to discover these unique places that they are making limited collections the, li the limited coll collections and capsule collections for us is working amazing because people at the end they buy something and they know that is for them mm. so i think that there, there is also an opportunity, the capture collections and collaborations. For sure. For us at Recovo, we also do a lot of collaborations with, with client brands. And we believe that uh, collaborations between two companies, it's a way uh, to, I'm going to say this in Spanish, like catapultar, like to yeah. boost to gain exposure. Yeah. 
exposure, uh, to explain the message in a louder way. So I'm truly, I'm, I'm a super fan of collaborations between a startup and a company launching a project with positive impact uh, towards a big thing. So I think that's also a key to, yeah. to um, boost this. Um, now I would like to talk more about the consumer side. Um, there is a lot of efforts put on choosing the material, creating a garment that is durable, that has a good quality in order to be reused many, many times, be part of many people's experiences. Um, of course, um, maybe to have like this um, special to be, to be unique. How can we communicate the consumer the value of the garment in a tag, in a product page at the e-commerce, or with the branding that we have at our shops? I mean, well, uh, of course, the, you, you want to go first? No, 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 no okay. you go first. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean for, at the, the end of the day, the, the, the branding, it's everything. The marketing is everything. Um, I think with the technologies and, um, of course, with the growth of sustainable fashion and s slow fashion and um, even creating synergies with uh, big fast fashion, I don't want to say any names, big fast fashion uh, companies with small companies. So they bring this kind of the next generation that they are more aware about the problem that we have and we live in. Um, they're going to create the, that yeah, ca catalyst like to, mm -hmm. you know, to go further. So I think the marketing influencers, of course, you, you can't put everything on a tag. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can put it on a, no, like totally. you on the um, on the on the garment, uh -huh. but it's complicated. At the end of the day, I believe that not everyone is gonna read that fully read it. So it needs to be more visual, mm -hmm. but always in an optimistic way. I believe. That. I I would say that it's all. About, I mean, for us, it's um, building a community. Uh, with sharing values, it's one of the key things that it's it's in, it's uh, reflecting to the to the product and at the end to the consumer behavior, and not not everyone relates to the sustainable speech. I mean, mm -hmm. not everyone is concerned about that. Mm -hmm. So there is also different ways of adapting the speech in order to see the audiences and to making that attractive. Because in Spain, as we know, there is no such awareness. So it's not, it's not one of the big decision makers in order to make a fashion purchase right mm -hmm. now at the moment, whilst in the north of Europe they are. Uh, but I think that, for example, the made in Spain is, some, is, a, is, a, is a theme, is a purpose that people actually feel connected. So it depends on, it depends on the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that you have to adapt and very know who is your client and build communities around that, around the values that they believe. Mm -hmm. I totally agree and also I think that sometimes maybe it's better to explain a message one way in order mm. to the audience to feel more connected to. Maybe in Spain it's more like quality, history, craftsmanship maybe and maybe not northern countries. The data impact mm -hmm. of the product is more relevant and people feel more co connected to. I want to share a reflection here. Um, the same way uh, influencers uh, help brands spread messages and uh, sell tons of products, uh, would you imagine that it was the same thing but for sustainable values and sustainable behavior when making a purchase? What do you think about this? Well, I How would it affect in consumers? I, I think it will be great, but here, well, it, this for me is the great elephant in the room. It's like, okay, they, they can try to transmit the values and the impact of the garments, but they are really transmitting something that they know it's real. Because brands, like the fashion industry now, the great problem of the fashion industry is to uh, collect, gather, and analyze data. So if, 
even brands doesn't have that data, how can they like spread this? So I will focus more in those type of craftsmanships, mm. uh, artisans, like uh, materials, but not about impact or something that it could be greenwashing. And we know that nowadays they are getting like quiet. Um, mm -hmm. it, we, we have to be careful with this. Makes sense. <laughs> I mean, uh, for for our side, um, we don't we we don't talk that much about sustainability in Spain. We do we do tend to adapt, as I told you, the speech and uh, how we communicate the product and how we um, uh, sell it according to different countries. But I would say that we also have to be very cautious because at the end, is the I mean. The, it's, it's, it's amazing that uh, all, this, all these sustainable companies are raising and all these textiles are starting to become more accessible to small and medium brands. But I think that for small and, and uh, medium brands right now, uh, for them, it's, when, when I talk to them, it's not about that being sustainable in terms of the fabrics, but in terms of economics. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they are not even able to make yeah. those margins and have that volume that they need. So for us, uh, the, in order to communicate this, we are not using that much the figure of the influencer, which is essential to communicate many, many things. But uh, we are trying to show the, the process, like the, the local, how everything is done in order to gain the trust and in order to show them you are buying this and it's taking this time, this amount of time to do it for you. So I think that showing that side, that insider side, it's a, it's a very effective, as I saw, way of promoting the sustainable consumer. Because you're showing with a very specific example the effort that it's put into that piece. Mm -hmm. exactly. Very interesting. Um, thank you very much for this conversation. I think we got many, many um, reflections around circularity, sustainability, and the future of fashion. So we're going to wrap up for now. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.